Welcome back, researchers. Now we're going to start working on our informational paragraph. And I know you're like, Ms. Carter, what is an informational paragraph? So first, let's talk about it. Over the past couple of weeks, we've learned a lot of things that researchers do. Today, we're going to continue to be researchers by sharing what we've learned through writing. Researchers share what they've learned through writing with others. Okay, and we're going to do that. But today, we're going to do some writing together. It won't be just you writing on your own. I'll help you through it. Our learning target for the day is I can contribute to the focus statement and detailed sentences in a piece of shared writing. Contribute. What does contribute mean, Ms. Gardner? Contribute means that you're going to help me out. Just like I'm going to help you, you're going to add information about what you've learned about birds and how they use their feathers to survive. I'm going to give information, you're going to give information. That is how you're going to contribute to our piece of shared writing. Now, I've made this chart here so that we can learn of all the parts of an informational paragraph. And I know you're still wondering, what is an informational paragraph? An informational paragraph is something that's going to tell something about what you've learned. Just like we've talked about our nonfiction text, either being there to, in, to persuade us to do something new or to give us some information. Our informational paragraph is giving people information on a certain topic. And what has our research question been, scholars? Exactly, how do birds use their feathers to survive? And we've learned so much about it already that I thought we could start writing together. So now I'm gonna tell you about some of the parts in our informational paragraph. I made this chart and I know you're saying, Miss Carter, that looks like a hamburger. And it is. A good paragraph has lots of different parts to it. The first part that we need is a topic sentence. The topic sentence is going to be the first sentence in our paragraph, and it's going to tell us what the paragraph will be about. What is our paragraph about today, scholars? Right, how birds use their feathers to survive. You've got it. The next part is the lettuce. We haven't gotten down to the meat of the sandwich yet, but we're on the lettuce. We're getting close. The lattice of our sandwich is the first detail. The first detail is going to give us one or two good sentences that support our topic sentence. So we know our topic sentence is telling us what the entire paragraph is going to be about. But our first detail is some, something that's going to support that. Something that's going to tell us more about how birds use their feather. Next, we have our second detail, another one or two good sentences that support our topic sentence, but differently. We're not going to write the same details. We've learned a lot of ways that birds use their feathers to survive. We're going to give more than one detail. Our third detail is one or two more good sentences that give a third supporting idea. And our fourth detail is one or two more good sentences that give a fourth supporting idea. And then lastly, our bottom bun is the closing or the conclusion sentence. Now we have a closing on our poem, but this is a little different. This is going to look a lot like our topic sentence, but we're going to say it in a different way. It's going to sum up everything that we've said here with our details and our conclusion sentence. Okay? Now, don't be scared. Don't be nervous. Today, we are not writing an entire paragraph. You guys are just going to help me work through a topic sentence, which is also called a focus statement, okay? And we're going to work on our first detail. Our focus statement, or our topic sentence, is going to tell the big idea of our paragraph. What are we writing this for? What information do we really want the reader to take away? Just like when we read a book, it has a main idea. 
something that the author wants us to walk away knowing. What do we want people to know by the end of our paragraph? What have we been researching? Right, we want them to know the many ways that birds use their feathers to survive. So, how could we think about all of the different things that we've learned together and come together and make a topic sentence? I think that our first sentence should be something like, birds use their feathers in lots of different ways to survive. It's not quite giving away any of the details yet in how birds use their feathers, but it's telling them that there are lots of ways that we know that birds use their feathers to survive, okay? Then we're going to move on and give our reader some details to support our topic. Now we said our topic was how birds use their feathers to survive. So what could a good first detail be? Let's take a look back at our text. We can start at the beginning and go with our first page about blue jays. We also use this page in our notes catcher that we did together. And it says feathers can Warm like a blanket. We know that's the way that birds are using their feathers to survive. So, hmm, how can we put that into a sentence for a reader? I want you guys to help me write a detail telling me how to put this into a sentence. What do I want to tell the reader? Feathers can be warm like a blanket. How is that telling me that birds are using them to survive? I want for Dojo today, you guys to send me one or two good sentences for our first detail that support our topic sentence about how birds use their feathers to survive. Mainly talking about the blue jay and how it uses its feathers to keep warm. What did we learn? I'll read it in case you forgot. It says, on a cold, damp day, a blue jay stays warm by fluffing up its feathers and trapping a layer of warm air next to its skin. So if I were going to write a sentence, I would say, hmm, a blue jay uses its feathers to stay warm on cold days. That is the way that the bird uses its feathers to survive. So I'm supporting my topic sentence because we're telling our reader how birds use their feathers to survive, okay? Now, we're also today going to do a little bit more research on, you guessed it, feathers. Yesterday, we drew a semi-plume feather and I've seen some great drawings. I know mine wasn't the greatest, but I know you guys can do better than me. So today, our second learning target is I can explain the purpose of a contour feather using pictures and words, okay? Now, what does a contour feather do? Let's flip through the page in our book that tells us about feathers. Here is a picture of a contour feather or some different contour feathers. Contour feathers help keep the bird's shape and color. Now, when we looked at all the other feathers, they were kind of just brown, grayish, no color really. But these look darker and brighter and richer and more vibrant. Those would be good adjectives to describe how those feathers look. Now, we learned yesterday when we want to draw a feather, we're gonna first trace. We're not gonna draw with a crayon or a marker first. We're gonna trace the outline and trace what we see. Feathers are different shapes and sizes, so we wanna notice the shape and the size of our feather. 
We don't want to have a long skinny feather when our contour feathers, they don't really look like that, do they? We also want to add details, okay? Because a scientific drawing is detailed. I want to see the curve of parts of the feather. I want to see that piece in the middle that is slanted a little to the left or to the right. I want to see that some of the feather looks a little thin on one side, and then one side it looks very, very full. We want to pay attention to all of those details and then attempt to draw them. So that will be your second assignment today, is to draw a scientific drawing of a contour feather. Tomorrow we're going to check back in. I'm going to check your contour feathers. And we're going to do more shared writing of an informational paragraph. I can't wait to see your sentences to support our topic sentence and your scientific drawing. I know you guys will do great. See you tomorrow.